There we go. Good evening. Let's see what time is it? 5.01. I see you've got Mr. Daniels on here. A couple of parents as well. Has Ms. McMillan joined us yet? Okay. Not yet. I know that she was planning on, on joining us. We did talk about it um, last week as well as um, this morning. But I'll go ahead just to honor time. Um, tonight, we also have Mr. Riley with us, our testing coordinator, as well as Ms. Ramsey, our literacy coach. I did mention Mr. Daniels being on here as one of our teachers. Um, oh, hello, there we go from Adrian. And Adrian, I thought you had the district SAP meeting tonight, so I'm happy that you are with us. So on tonight's agenda, um, we'll start off with, I'll give you a, a brief report of what's going on right now with our school and um, some recognitions and celebrations, what we have going on. And then I'll turn it over to Mr. Riley to give us an update on the spring testing and what is what is coming actually starting next week. And then Ms. Ramsey, I'll turn it over to you so you can share with us um, what's going on here in the, the literacy world um, with K through 12 for our students. This week, um, I was very, very pleased to have two very special celebrations, recognitions for our students. Um, we had our Junior Honor Society induction as well as our Honor Society. I see, there's Ms. McMillan. Um, Ms. McMillan, I introduced everyone already um, and started talking a little bit about our recognition and celebration that we had this week with our mm -hmm. induction ceremonies and then our award ceremony that we had. Yes. Um, I don't know the, the number of students off the top of my head, but we did have a wonderful turnout. Um, and a lot of our students that received that honor roll recognition for AB as well as A honor roll. We have quite a few students, one that is joining us tonight um, that has a 4.0 GPA. So we are really, really proud of all of them. And we're very pleased with the turnout that we had with our parents as well and grandparents and other family members. And I cannot um, say enough about the other night. It was a lot of fun to have all the kids here and to celebrate with the families. So um, thank you families for being here. It was a great time. And I always love celebrating academics, my favorite thing. And I see Camilla's on there now too as well. Um, so those are some of the things that we are definitely celebrating. Our teachers have been working very hard in their PLCs on a weekly basis, not only as grade levels, but as um, in their departments, looking at standards, looking at different interventions for our students, but not only the interventions, but looking at the students that are those levels, you know, three, four, and five, and providing them enrichment and different extension activities to, to increase that rigor and really continue to accelerate their learning. So that's what they've been doing within their PLCs and they've been working closely with our principal on those standards, on those instructional guides, those pace charts and making sure that they are all aligned with, with the standards and what we are doing as a district as well as the state. Which is a perfect, I think, segue for Mr. Riley as we talk about those progress monitoring as we lead into our testing season, which I would say, I feel like we've been in testing all year long, but I think the, the kickoff um, will be next, next week as we have seniors coming in. Correct, thank you, Dr. I. Um, yes, we are getting into our progress monitoring three window coming up in May. Um, before that, we do have our, our retakes for Algebra 1 on the 27th and 28th of February, and we have uh, FSA ELA reading and writing retakes on March 6th, 7th, and 8th, and we have, we do have some uh, 
SAT and ACT offerings for juniors and seniors, uh, all of which are on our LVS calendar, um, testing calendar that Mr. Metzner has put on the LVS website. All of our testing dates, which are now finalized, are on there. So every grade level and times and dates and all of that is on our LVS testing calendar. Um, probably the biggest question that I have been getting recently is the fact that progress monitoring three in May, yes, students will need to come into the building to test. Um, the biggest question I've been getting is, are they allowed to take this one at home like they did the first two? And the answer is no. Uh, just like traditionally when we had the FSA and students had to come into the building in May, or usually it was in April to do writing, but there is no writing. But yes, students will have to come in to the building in May for whatever EOC or FAST test that they will need to take. The other question is they look at the calendar and they see only one date for reading or one date for math. That is also correct. Uh, reading is only a one day test now. Math is only a one day test. Um, all of the EOCs are one day tests as well, not just bio and civics and US history, all of them. Algebra, geometry, also one day tests. Those are really the two biggest questions um, that I have been getting, Dr. I. Um, but again, the calendar is set. The calendar is on our LVS website. Um, you can always direct questions. I've also sent out parent links, so everybody should know when they're coming in. But I will send out two more um, before we get to uh, mid-April. Perfect. And that's what I was going to um, mention as well. So thank you, Mr. Riley, because I know you've um, you've sent those messages out as a school. We also send out per postcards as far as save the date. Um, as a friendly reminder, students, of course, put those on the refrigerator um, as a friendly reminder. But that communication, not only, thank you, Mr. Metzner, for putting it on our school website, but we also, um, with the teachers, they have it on their announcement pages. They definitely communicate that as well. Um, verbally to their students through those live lessons. So it is definitely communicated in a variety of ways. And if you could also, Mr. Riley, help me out with, with the progress monitoring. It is my understanding from what I have seen is sometimes when the parents are asking about the results, um, they'll come in to school in person, they'll be calling, but they can also see that information on their students' um, focus parent portal, correct? Correct. For all students kindergarten through second grade, uh, we sent them the results from the STAR or the STAR Early Literacy. We mailed them home to them for reading and math. Um, for all of the other FAST results, three through 10, um, those are all available on the on focus, on the testing side of focus, when you on the student or parent portal. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to definitely share that um, when it comes to the communication um, as a school, the district has really helped us out, supported not only Lee Virtual School, but all the schools with that communication as well. And they'll also be sending out, since this is you know, a Florida State assessment, there'll also be messages coming out from the district as well through School Messenger. Not only our school where we're communicating, but the district will also be sending those friendly reminders in that communication as well. Mr. Riley, thank you. Was there anything else you wanted to say before I turn it over to Ms. Ramsey? Nope, that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you. To our wonderful literacy coach, Ms. Ramsey. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to go over everything I ready and what parents um, and learning guides are able to see by looking at the iReady dashboard. So I'm going to try to share my screen. I think, hopefully, I have. I know you can do it. <laughs> well, that's, well, let's see. For the kings and queens of technology at Lee Virtual <laughs> School. Yes. I, that, is, that is true. <laughs> we are at that. So I just want to go over the an overview of the iReady lessons, what the student dashboard looks like, what 
parent and learning guides can do to help, where you can find information, and then if you have any questions from me that I can answer. You can always send me an email or call me, but if you have a question right now, you know, just at the end of the presentation, just ask away. So the iReady, when we take the diagnostic, it um, creates a learning path, and the learning path is what students work on weekly. They work on for about 45 minutes a week and complete at least two lessons a week on their own personalized instruction. Um, so this is basically saying the same thing. It's at your individual le level based on the diagnostic test. Oh, sorry, you're gonna hear my grandson in the back, I'm so sorry. And the, the lessons are just right for you. So that's, that means that if you are, maybe there's an area that you're struggling in, you're gonna get lessons to help um, reinforce that area. But if you are exceeding in certain domains or areas, then you're gonna get um, lessons at that accelerated level. Um, I ready lessons are taught both explicitly and in a guided format and also independent work. There's always a short quiz at the end where we teachers and parents can monitor to see um, the success of that lesson or if maybe a teacher needs to meet up with the student to um, reinforce that skill. Lessons are based on research. Um, they're built from the college and career readiness standards, and they're fun and they're engaging. And so these are some examples of what students work on from kindergarten working on letter and letter sounds to grade three and and on working on vocabulary and also comprehension. Again, this is for math, some of what the um, platform looks like for the different levels in math. Let's scoot this out of my way. And this is what the student sees. This is the dashboard. Teachers sometimes will assign specific lessons, lessons that maybe go along with what you're learning, um, what students are learning in their um, class, but they also work on the My Path, and a lot of the time on iReady is spent working right there on My Path. So there is the teacher assigned lessons, and then the other. Um, Dashboard shows the teacher signed and the my path. And so you see the difference with the two dashboards. One is definitely geared towards K1 and, and two, where the other dashboard is more um, for the older students. And so when you get into the dashboard, you're going to choose either reading or math. And at the bottom, you'll see to do my progress, my stuff and learning games. And we'll go over each of those. First of all, it's the to do button and, and parents, this is something that you know, I, I want you to go on, I want you to look at, I want you to see what they've been assigned to do. So you're gonna see if there's any teacher assigned lessons there and assignments. You can also go into the completed work and this is really helpful to look at. The teachers recommend 45 minutes a week, about 45 minutes a week. So you can track that to see if your child is putting in that 45 minutes. Um, so if we're looking at this dashboard, the student's been on for 30 minutes and they still should put in another 45, another 15 minutes. You also can see, um, the lessons passed for 
this year. It starts in August when we start in our iReady and it shows you their pass rate. And then it's also fun to look at how many um, lessons they've passed in a row. So this student, you see that they've passed seven lessons in a row without, um, without failing any lessons. Once you fail a lesson, that starts back. So I'm not used to using those. And so this is also, I want parents to make sure that you're looking at the completed work. So it's important to see how much time your, the students are spending on iReady, but we wanna know, are they passing the lessons? Um, so when you get into completed work, it'll show you all of the students' past work. And then lastly, I wanna show you the My Stuff button. So when you go into there, that's when you get to change your background, you get to change um, the character. And lastly, I was kidding before, um, there's the learning games also. The learning games are for math and they're a great way to reinforce um, fluency and comprehension with math, math computation. We do recommend that they save these games till after they complete the work that um, was assigned. So the 45 minutes, the two lessons, and if a teacher had assigned, um, a teacher assigned lesson, do that first, but then go on to the games because the games are fun, but they're, they're also a good um, reinforcement. And then, so what can you do, parents, to help um, with some incentives and some ideas of um, how you could get engaged with iReady so that the students um, are engaged also and interested in it? So here are the things we're gonna talk about. So preparing, it's important that they do their iReady in a designated area where it's quiet, that they have paper next to them so that they're writing down um, if it's math or it's helping them solve a problem. If it's reading, it might be vocabulary words that they um, struggled with and they, they wrote it down so that they could get some help with it or, you know, just having paper next to them to take notes. Um, help them to stay focused. So when you're on your 45 minutes that you know, that that 45 minutes is on iReady and you're not um, looking all around and not paying attention. So parents, if you could just help them stay focused during their iReady time, that's important. Support them by keeping them motivated. Um, encourage them to do their lessons every week and to take the quiz serious. So when you see the quiz come up that they're taking their time and they're not rushing through and they're going back, um, especially with the reading, they're going back to justify their answer, prove their answer, finding the proof in the text. Um, and it's okay if, if they see that they, they didn't pass a quiz, it's okay. Um, the great thing about iReady is they will automatically reteach that same skill. Um, and then if they don't pass it two times in a row, that's when the teacher will be notified and the teacher will ask to meet with, with their students. But that's that's okay. That's all part of learning. And and you know, we're that's what the program's here to learn from. It's important to track their progress. Um, so talk to them about the lessons talk to them about their time, just you letting them show you what's going on on their dashboard. Let them be the teacher and show you um, what the different parts are. And then again, just celebrating, you know, things like if you complete um, eight lessons in a month, you, you accomplish that goal um, that they, you'll take them out for ice cream or you'll give you know, them some little reward. Um, 
because everybody likes that a piece of candy. It's all, it goes a long way. Helpful reminders is just to take your time, don't rush, always try your best. For math, show your work. For reading, reread, reread the passage. Um, in my class that I'm working with right now, I stress to the students that you should be reading a passage at least two times. So, you know, read through the passage once just to kind of understand what it was about. Read it again to help you answer those questions. And then check your work before you move on to the next question. So the big takeaways are I ready personalized instruction provides students with lessons that are based on oh, their individual skill. Regularly, I can't stress that enough either, to review the progress with your student, um, you being aware and showing an interest in their I ready, in their lessons past, in their uh, um, learning dashboard. All of that interest that you're showing, it goes a long way. It makes the students proud and it um, just motivates them. And then lastly, celebrate, celebrate the progress. So do you have any questions for me, anyone on iReady? That awesome. was wonderful. I don't have any questions, but I do want, because we hear a lot from, from parents and of course we hear from teachers, um, but we're so fortunate right now to have students with us that I would love to get their, their input, some, some feedback of, of iReady. Well, it we is, have... you know, kindergarten through eighth grade, reading and in math. Um, some students might struggle in one area more than the other, or some don't struggle, but they really like the interactive games and they look at it as a reinforcement. Um, but I would love to hear, hear your opinion of, you know, how long have you used iReady? Do you like it? The, the pros and cons. Yeah. I'd like to know too. Be honest with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Adrian and Camilla. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. So I know if I was asking a first grader or a second grader, I would probably get a different answer than what I might get from the group we have tonight. And I know that the two of you, three of you are not shy. You have spoken to me numerous times. So yes, I I do agree with the possibility of, of instructive um, learning games mm -hmm. to be seen as more like as a reinforcement since in the end there is a like right, a concept. Yeah. At least in, in math, I've seen the, the learning games in math. Not much in, in language arts, but in math I have seen like there's um Cupcakes shop, I think. So the 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 person is in charge of, of operating and see what are, what are the costs and there there's some addition and subtraction. The different concepts that may be seen as a reinforcement instead of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Do you think though that the I read, even though you have your own path based on your your learning, do you think it's challenging? Do you think it's rigorous where? Um, kind of pushing you to to better yourself as really preparing you for you know your math skills say for instance or do you think it's it's do you think it's easy or do you think it's a little challenging I would personally say that it's not as challenging but you know as maybe like a regular mainstream class uh, but I would say that uh, depending on the needs of everybody it could be a help or it could be something that's neutral like it's not it's not really doing much or maybe it's practicing a skill. Camilla and did you have something to say I see your hand is raised. I also want to ask one that, that question because um, I I noticed that at least for me, um, I ready is a bit of like it's 
pretty easy in a sense that it's things that you might already know at some point. However, even though that is true, I really think like, be, even though you think you might know something, if you didn't pass it exactly on the exam, maybe it's something that you didn't think you would have not known. It's something that you can learn now to reinforce your skills, even if you thought you know it, maybe to improve, because maybe at the time of a test, you are not sure about the answer. At least that is my point of view on things. Thank you. That's great. Camilla, that's, you're right, because it might be one part that you, you didn't, I can't even think of an example right now, but um, I'm going to go with maybe you thought you knew comprehension, but maybe informational, um, informational text versus literature text gave you a little bit more trouble than you realized. So then it'll reinforce that informational text a little bit more so that then you are on grade level. But even but some of those you, passages I that I've that. even read to me, I I like it, but I love informational texts and looking mm -hmm. for that evidence and mm -hmm. I do too. everything. So it's just, it's always learning. So that reinforcement I think is is wonderful and those practicing those skills. Um, out of curiosity though, how long have um, the two of you, since the two of you spoke up, because every school has been doing iReady a little differently. It started, Ms. Ramsey, you can probably correct me on this, but maybe iReady came to the district four years ago, I think as a pilot. Mm, we, and not every school yeah, had not it. Every school had it. Um, but um, Camilla and Adrian, how next to this year, and did you use iReady last year as a sixth grader or did you use iReady in elementary school? So I remember in last year, I do remember fifth grade. Yes. Yeah. I ready. We started I ready like in the like in the half of the year of fifth grade, I think. I'm not so sure. Maybe we did it. I'm not so sure. Maybe we did it the whole year, but I do think I remember doing I ready since fifth grade. What I also wanted to comment on, um, I kind of noticed, I don't know if this can be changed from your perspective, but I did notice that some of the text, the texts in iReady, since let's say something I didn't pass 100% in, in the diagnostic, um, I've noticed some of the text I've received before, not in the same years, not in the same diagnostic test, but in previous years have come up again in iReady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, it, it, it's the, the lessons are the same at the level. So you may have um, been working on an eighth grade level and then for some reason, your diagnostic in one area, maybe you it showed you drop a little bit. And then when you work your way back up to that eighth grade level, it's going to be the same story again. So that's not uncommon that it you would see the same story once again. Right, the same story or even the same vocabulary. You might see certain words over and over again. And I think last year, if I remember right, you tested out of iReady um, because then we did that book study together. So, and that was great. Nice. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Are you still reading the same author, Camilla? Because I know you enjoyed it. Oh, you are. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, are there any other comments on um, with iReady or any of the or any of the testing before we we move on? Well, thank you, students, for that feedback. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Miss McMillan. That's what we had. We went over our recognition celebrations. What our teachers are currently working on um, the testing, of course our focus on literacy throughout the school, our communication plan as we continue to communicate with, with our families, all our stakeholders. 
thank you so much for hosting tonight. I really appreciate that. And no, I don't have anything else, um, but thanks to everyone who joined us. Um, and Camilla and Adrian, it's always really wonderful to hear from you. And thank you for answering and providing us some child, uh, some student feedback. You know, it's always helpful for us. So thank you for, ha and have a great night, everybody. Night. <laughs>